Oh, that's double max kill right there. Good day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. So guys, here we are. Y'all have been requesting this video for weeks on end, and despite my better judgement, and despite a very public dislike I have for this weapon, here we are. The NSX Yumi Review. This, like the Tengu, is one of the most polarizing weapons in the community right now, with some swearing their allegiance to it, and others simply wanting to forget that it even exists. And I can see both sides of the coin there, and today we're going to figure out why that's the case. For those new to my weapon reviews, we're going to start off by doing a quick TLDR of said review for those who don't really feel like sitting through a 10 minute plus long video, but for those who are more interested in the nitty and the gritty, we will follow it up by jumping into the statistics that make the Yumi what it is on the battlefield, with some weapon specific strategy and thoughts afterwards, with a discussion about attachment options to wrap things up. But, as I said, for those who are a little bit more time poor right now, let's quickly go over a shortened version of this Yumi review. Alright, so, the Yumi. Where the hell do I even start here? I feel as though the great divide within the community comes down to two factors. The fact that it's a 5 round burst fire weapon with a 6 shot kill maximum damage, and the fact that it comes with a 0.25 second charge up mechanic every time you squeeze the trigger. So, translation, whenever you want to fire a burst out of this thing, you have to wait 0.25 seconds before the rounds actually start flying. Which that in itself is going to sound very off-putting to a whole lot of players. Now that's especially considering that the baseline damage with the weapon sees it scoring not enough damage on body shots to kill in one burst, which leaves you susceptible to approximately 0.5 seconds of charge up time at the bare minimum to land all the necessary shots to kill a target from full health to none. Those of you who know what time to kill stats look like in this game will know that 0.5 seconds will leave you dead on the floor no questions asked against any other gun in the game. So, how do we get around that? Well, let me introduce you to the importance of headshots, and make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, if you can land a headshot or two mid-burst when engaging a target with this gun, you can bring your bullets to kill down into the realm of being able to wipe a target out in one clean burst, and if you achieve that, this weapon has one of the fastest time to kills in the game, and this is going against other weapons and their headshot bonuses as well. The issue that still remains, though, is that lingering threat of missing around or a headshot in a burst, which will then leave you to the mercy of that 0.25 second waiting time that an enemy can use to fill every square centimeter of your person with bullet holes. So it's a high risk, high reward weapon, and I can see its charm from that perspective. But then I asked myself, why would I take this thing over anything else that is more forgiving and still has the capabilities to dish out very high end headshot damage? My rationale behind asking that question, guys, is that it's very much a case of you need to put all of your eggs in one basket here, except the basket is very much a soggy piece of cardboard that you just got to pray doesn't break on you. In a smaller engagement where you can control the situation a bit more confidently and make sure you're only engaging a certain amount of targets at a time, this weapon will treat you right if you treat it right. But this is planet side. 99% of the engagements you face are almost certainly going to throw a variable at you that this weapon simply cannot counter you are instantly going to be on the short end of the stick while your weapon reamps itself for a second burst, and for that reason alone, I struggle to recommend the Yumi. Its cons don't outweigh its pros in the realm of Planet Side 2. But, that's my opinion on the TLDR. Let's quickly get into the stats and see how the Yumi actually performs from the ground up. Let's start off with the party piece of the Yumi, its damage model, and its delivery method for that matter. This weapon sports a 167 maximum damage at 10 meters, dropping off to a minimum of 125 at the 90 meter range, which is admittingly a fairly admirable damage drop off range overall. Now, this translates to a 6 shot kill out at the 10 meter mark, stretching to a 7 shot kill from the 10 to 55 meter mark, with a 8 shot kill being required beyond 55 meters all the way out to the 90 meter minimum damage range. So you'll notice that this basically means that the weapon needs two bursts to kill a target at any range if your shots connect to the body. And with the charge up impact in play here, that can really mess with the theoretical time to kills. If we take the damage model and the whopping mid burst rate of fire of 1000 rounds per minute or 16.66 rounds per second, clocking that into my usual time to kill calculator and 
well, you can see it for yourselves, guys. The time to kills here are all sub 0.46, which is typically regarded as being a really high DPS weapon. So, yeah, these time to kills are all really nutty and are relatively accurate on the basis of one thing, and that one thing only that you score enough headshots in a burst to eliminate the need to queue up a second burst. So at the maximum damage range, you need one shot to be a headshot to one burst someone. You need two shots to one burst someone at the second damage range, which is not completely impossible. And then you need three shots to be headshots beyond 55 meters, which let's be honest, if you're doing that, you are aimbotting. If you wanna get really, really technical, Every time you need to fire a new burst to finish off a target, add 0.25 seconds to the time to kill and that will give you a more accurate time to kill number. You know, you'll see it grow a little more every burst into a more normal time to kill range in line with other weapons. Anyway, we'll briefly go over the recoil and other handling stats here as they're actually pretty simple on this weapon. Recoil wise, we're looking at a pretty mild vertical kick with the unfortunate presence of a horizontal right hand side pull, which is a bit of a nuisance to deal with. In total though, the only real thing you need to do is pull down and to the left on your mouse just a bit to compensate for what you see on the graph. But as you can see on the graph, it's very difficult for this weapon to kick aggressively at all. In fact, it's impossible for it to do so. From a numbers perspective, a 0.22 degree vertical kick per shot is present with a zero times first shot multiplier, which is actually a really awesome stat to see on burst fire weapons. Horizontal recoil on the weapon is 0.12 degrees per shot and is governed by a 0.2 degree horizontal tolerance, which is honestly really straightforward. The kick per shot is mild and the weapon will only kick once left or right before being forced back to the center point. This is actually a best case scenario in the world of horizontal shift. But then we've unfortunately got that right hand side 5 degree kick per shot that throws things out of whack just that little bit. So get ready for a small right hand side angle. The Kona 5 values here present us with nothing really too special to mention other than the fact that you really should avoid hip firing wherever possible. But yeah, look, I thought that was already given considering how the weapon, you know, fires. <laughs> <laughs> Ammo wise we have a 30 round magazine which translates to 6 bursts per mag before needing to reload and a 210 round ammo pool that is reloaded with a relatively fast 1.8 second short reload and a 2.45 second long reload. Muzzle velocity here sits at 580 meters per second which isn't the worst in the world but we have also got a 0.5 times aiming down sights movement multiplier, pretty average in the world of assault rifles. Alright guys, so that is the Yumi, and I'm gonna quickly link back to a statement I made, or a question I asked, if you will, in the TLDR, and it encapsulates all the issues I have with this gun. There is no reason for me to take this gun over any other weapon in the arsenal right now. Yes, the weapon could change in the future, but as of right now, there are just too many major barriers between me enjoying this weapon and seeing the advantages of its incredible one burst capabilities. Because, and I won't lie, that is an awesome advantage to this weapon. If you catch a target off guard and manage to one burst him, he will not have enough time to react at all. But as I said, there are just too many barriers in the way for me to enjoy those incredible one burst capabilities right now. And the first one I've got is hilariously not actually a fault with the weapon specifically, but it's more or less a problem with all burst fire weapons in the game right now, and it's a problem that becomes more and more noticeable the longer the burst on a weapon actually becomes. And it's the fact that if you commence a burst while aiming down sights, you cannot transition out of aiming down sights until the burst is complete. The same goes for starting a burst while hip firing. You know, if I start firing the Yumi to engage a target in a 1v1 and a second enemy rounds the corner soon after, I cannot transition to a hip fire stance to at least start turning around and running away until the burst has completely run its course. And with that 0.25 second delay on there, that's included in that too. So it slows you down even more. Another example could be that I come around a corner and I'm surprised by an enemy, but I happen to press mouse one just a split second before I press mouse two, and I'm therefore locked to hip fire for the initial burst, which is just about gonna leave me as good as dead because, well, as I said before, hip firing with this thing is no bueno considering the emphasis on headshots and the reliance on needing to minimize the amount of bursts you need to fire. Or my personal favorite example of how this mechanic screws you over as a new conglomerate soldier. You know, you bloody start a burst up and you have an ally walk in front of you, which allows you to send the poor bastard down to the depths of hell on the express delivery line thanks to the weapon's blitzing rate of fire. 
The locked in on a firing stance mechanic is one of the weapon's biggest Achilles heels and needs to be worked out in the grand scheme of things for burst fire weaponry. It's a gripe I have with this weapon that doesn't even come from the weapon itself. But okay, let's just say that we get past what is essentially more of a gameplay fault at its core and isn't something that's directly tied to the weapon at hand. What still puts it in a category of currently being something that I can't see myself using beyond a meme or a challenge? You know, it's quite simply this really. There are just other too many weapons out there that I feel are a whole lot more forgiving yet still offer the same effective damage outputs. Let's take the Vanquisher, Sabre 13 and the Lacerta as examples. These are all, you know, burst fire weapons that sport incredibly light recoil patterns both vertically and horizontally as well as high end damage models that when you chain headshots can knock out a target within one to two bursts and most importantly will refire a new burst as soon as the first one concludes if you sample the weapon correctly. Now, sure, even when scoring headshots with these other weapons, you aren't going to quite reach the raw time to kill values of the Yumi, but those raw time to kill values of the Yumi don't mean squat until you add the presence of the pre-fire charge up. What I'm getting at here is that if you have two soldiers of the same skill level pull their triggers at the exact same time, the user of the more conventional weapon is always going to come out on top, no matter how good your aim is, because that Yumi has that permanent 0.25 second buffer added to the time to kill, which in a straight 1v1 is actually going to put you in such a disadvantage that it'll see you dead more times than not. Trust me guys, despite my complaints here, I really wanted to like this weapon. I did. A skill-based weapon that relies solely on headshots and rewards you for said headshots is a concept similar to that of the NSX Daimyo, and I've been really enjoying that weapon lately. Its heavy reliance on headshots and its complementary roadblock, if you will, just really puts the whole time to kill argument out the window for me. Because again, if you fire this and something else from the burst fire category of weapons at the same time and you both land the same amount of headshots, you're going to lose 9 times out of 10. And as soon as that second burst comes into play, the weapon just sort of has you sitting there, scratching your head awkwardly for a bit. You know, 0.25 seconds may not seem like a lot of time guys, but in the world of first person shooters and time to kill, it's a long ass time, kind of similar to how in racing, one second is a long time. It may not seem like it, but it is. But that's not to say you can't pick up the weapon if you're looking for a challenge. And with that, some tips and tricks on how to use the weapon as it is currently. Firstly, let the recoil do the work. Starting a burst on the head is difficult as you can't compensate for recoil until it happens. And on burst fire weaponry, especially ones with a delay, that can happen quite suddenly. So the general rule of thumb here with people using this weapon is to aim around the neck and upper chest area and let the recoil do the work, kicking to the head to finalize the kill. Sometimes recoil can be an asset. This time it is. Also, be sure to watch your ammo count. This weapon will only have six bursts before needing to reload. Six pulls of the trigger can get away from you pretty quickly, so be sure to watch that ammo count and take the time to reload when possible. Thankfully, our reload speeds here are incredibly quick and makes the relatively common reloading you'll be doing with this weapon a bit of a breeze, to be honest, against other assault rifles in the category. Additionally, know when you beat. You know, if you can't kill someone in one burst and you have someone lining you up, it might be time for you to cut bait and run to the nearest human shield. I mean, ally. Charging the weapon up for a second burst simply you do, is simply time you don't have a lot of the time, especially if someone starts to shoot you back. Also, just keep in mind that when you start your burst, you are committed to it thanks to the stance the weapon locks you in mid-burst. Just keep that in mind. Anyway, that's all I've got when it comes to strategy and thoughts on the Yumi. And let's say that the challenge that this thing brings interests you. Fantastic. Let's go over some attachment options. The weapon has access to a 1x through to 3.4x optics, including a 1x IRMV, a flash suppressor, compensator, forward grip, dark light flashlight, extender magazines, underbarrel HE grenades and smoke launchers, high velocity ammunition and soft point ammunition. Starting things off, go for a 2x optic. It's definitely the sweet spot for this weapon. It gives you the clarity you need to go for those, you know, neck to head shots at medium distances. And it just helps to, you know, really ensure that you're putting your bullets where they count. I would definitely recommend taking a compensator next. Anything to help out with that vertical recoil is going to allow for you to position your crosshair a little higher on a target by default and still let the recoil do some work, but it still makes it a little less jarring 
in the grand scheme of things. As far as the underbarrel rail slot is concerned, I was using a forward grip for a lot of this review, but quite frankly, on a weapon where horizontal recoil is just incredibly light and is also only going to kick one time in a direction before being kicked back the opposite way, it just isn't worth it. Extender magazines or an underbarrel grenade launcher are definitely key takes here. Also, I was running high velocity ammo for the majority of this review, but some people in the Twitch chat when I was testing things out told me that soft point was the better idea, and I have to agree with them. It does extend out the maximum damage lethality, just that little bit extra to give you a little bit more flexibility in more firefights, so definitely worth taking that as well. And guys, with all that said, that does conclude today's weapon review of the NSX Yumi. And I'm not going to lie, guys, I think the weapon needs a bit of a rework. I can see where the developers have tried to go with it. I really can. But I think, again, there's just a little bit too much of all your eggs in one basket. And it's very much all about landing all bullets. It, it assumes that players are going to have a 100% accuracy with this gun. And a lot of players simply don't have accuracy levels that can support a weapon like this. I think it's very much directed towards, you know, players having aimbot level accuracies when that just simply isn't the case a lot of the time. So I think some slight adjustments would go a long way just to bring the weapon into a realm of competitiveness with some of the other burst fire rifles. Again, I could probably do the majority of stuff I could do with this gun and more with things like a Vanquisher, a Saber 13, and a Lacerta for each faction respectively. I guess for the NSOs, you guys are bang out of luck and are stuck with this weapon. But that's my opinion on it, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, back hitting the like button would be greatly appreciated. And if you find yourselves new to the channel, consider back hitting that subscribe button whilst you're at it. If you guys are also interested, all my social media links, including my YouTube join memberships link, is down in the description below as well and in the pinned comment down below. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all next time. Take care, guys. Have a good one.